Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Brandon again, and you're here with me in my hotel room at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. And I don't know if you can pick up on this theme we seem to be developing, but we're getting pretty intimate with these videos, places where I sleep, my bedroom, you're traveling with me now, you're all up in my face. I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Anyways, sitting here at my desk now, uh, doing a little bit of work. I want to update you guys on what's going on. Since I am traveling all week, you probably noticed the video on Monday from Max Tuning. Thank you, Max, for doing that. Thank you guys for watching, liking, disliking, trolling, responding, whatever. I've been bugging Max to do that video for me for around four months now, since before the new year. So the fact that he finally came through, I'm very appreciative of that. However, what I'm not appreciative of is the fact that that video got more views and likes than my normal content does. And I'm kind of hurt a little bit because I thought we were having a moment here with us being more intimate, as I just said. And you go and you like some other guys' videos more than mine? I mean, what's up? What's up? A little bit of a jealous ex-girlfriend moment going on here. But I also want to tell you guys that my powerlifting meet, kind of changing directions very quickly from that, my powerlifting meet that was supposed to happen on April 13th has been canceled. And I found that out on the 6th when Bob from Olympus Iron, who was also going to be doing the meet with me, texted me to let me know. And when he told me that, had a little bit of a catabolic shock effect and my beard just fell off, but it's starting to rebound a little bit, so it's coming back in. But I want to let you guys know what's going on. I might do a mock meet when I get home, but I'm very disappointed to say the least. Now, the point of this particular video is to do a quick q and I'd mentioned this before I left, and I thought I'd go ahead and do it. I posted on the Campbell Fitness Facebook page. The next five to ten people to ask a question will get answered via video, and I let it go a minute or two, refreshed, and there's like 15 or so on here. So I'm just going to try to run through these very quickly. So the first one on here says, what's the story behind your tattoos? And just so you know, if I'm looking up, it's because I have this propped against my laptop and I'm reading the questions. And this question regarding my tattoos is probably the most frequently asked question. And it's also probably the most frequently deflected answer I give. And I'm going to continue to do so because I like and believe in consistency. So... To give you a little bit of information, all my tattoos are Egyptian in nature. I've been big into Egyptology since I was a young kid. I used to always be into archaeology as well. I blame it on those Indiana Jones movies and something I've always been interested in. But the Egyptian side of things have always been something that's kind of captivated me. And as I learned more about it, some of their stories and life lessons really translate well into stuff that I've either been through personally or just believe in. And... So much so, in fact, that I thought it would be a good idea to tattoo that onto my body. Now, obviously, there's a little bit more deeper meanings and stories behind those. I don't really feel like getting into those. Some might question my logic, but it's my logic, and that's all that really matters. I will also say I do have some Japanese tattoos on both of my ribs, on my left and right side. I did live in Japan for five years in Yokosuka. I lived there twice, actually, once for two years, once for around three years. So, again, I thought it would be a good enough idea to get that tattooed permanently on my body. Next question, moving on. How is Max tuning bigger than you? Well, this is a trick question because he's not, so that is the answer. I could troll more a little bit, but I like Max, and he's a little bit sensitive, so I don't want to hurt his feelings too bad because I feel like I do a good job of that on a fairly consistent basis. Again, bringing it back to consistency. The next question is actually a legitimate question. It says, losing tightness at the bottom of the squat and having butt round under? Question mark. I am already descending with a belly, with a belly full of air contracting my abs. Will descending slower help this? As right now, I just drop straight down into the hole. So let me take two approaches to this. The first, which is going to be intermixed within the second, is a not-so-serious approach. And the fact is, is any time you're able to drop down into the hole, you're going to have a good time. So that's not a problem. But to address your question more seriously, what I found has really helped me is breathing techniques. And at first, I scoffed at this because I thought, oh, just breathing. Who cares about that? That's not going to play a big role. But after going to that JTS seminar, which, in fact, I did post a link to a JTS article the other week on this Facebook page as well. Breathing has helped me tremendously, and that's one of the things I focus on. As soon as I walk the bar out, I might take a good 15 to 30 seconds before I actually commence squatting just to make sure that my tightness is right. So your core tightness is huge. Your upper body tightness is huge as well. So I always try to force my elbows down, chest up, big belly full of air, pinch my elbows into my lats. Um, but for me... If I drop too fast into the hole, and again, you can take this as a sexual innuendo if you want, dropping too fast into the hole for me usually results in a bad time. And for me, it's because even I'm trying, even though I'm trying to maximize that rebound effect at the bottom, doing so usually causes me to lose a lot of my tightness. So I have a more kind of methodical approach to squatting in that sense. And you can see from my videos, it's not very overly explosive in the hole. Next question is not a question, but it's a comment from Kai and Angelo from Fitness Angelo. He just says, Brandon, you demand. And 
Thanks. I can't disagree with that at all. I am the man. Next question. What are you most afraid of in life? I don't think I'm afraid of anything in life necessarily. I wouldn't say I don't get anxiety or anxious over certain things that are the unknown or doing things I'm not accustomed to. I'm kind of, again, as I said, methodical in the way I like to do things. So I guess doing something that's foreign to me could cause some anxiety, but I wouldn't say I'm afraid of that. Next question, how do you think the Redskins will do this year with Jackson? So Deshaun Jackson being signed from the Eagles, who I hate, so I've never liked him. But in general, even though he's coming on to the Redskins, I've found, and anyone who likes the Redskins or pays attention to football probably can agree that, just because you sign high-profile free agents does not always mean it works out well, specifically in the case of the Redskins, most recently with Albert Hainsworth. What about Adam Archuleta, Deion Sanders, Bruce Smith, Jeff George? The list goes on and on and on and on and on. Chemistry does play a big role in this. I think the Redskins will probably do around 8-8, eight and eight, be around 500, which in the NFC East is awfully close to getting into the playoffs. So they, they might make the playoffs this year. Um, be interesting to see how they do with the new head coach in Gruden. But we'll see. Always be optimistic. I've learned that since being a Redskins fan. You never really hope for the best, sadly enough. Next question from Dave. Are you cheating on your girlfriend with that incline bench? And the answer is no. My girlfriend knows what I do. I film it. We have a very open relationship. And to be honest, I got 99 problems, but a bench ain't one. <laughs> that was really bad. Oh, God. All right. You need to move on to the next one. What music do you listen to? So you guys probably know. I answer this question a lot in comments. A lot of times when I'm in the gym, I like to rely on Metallica or Eminem. Those are kind of like my go-to music in the gym. Uh, but I listen to a lot of newer stuff as well as a lot of older stuff outside of the gym. It's a big smorgasbord of everything. I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, I like to listen to everything except for country. Well, I like to listen to country too if it's a good song. I don't discriminate. I like the Rolling Stones a lot, a lot of older classic rock as well, but dubstep, rap, bluegrass, whatever you can really think of, I enjoy it. Maybe some show tunes perhaps. Uh, I know a lot of you guys like the Frozen song now, but it's not really my style. It's, I don't discriminate, but I don't necessarily listen to it. Next question, did you enjoy the How I Met Your Mother ending? So for this, first of all, if you guys watch this show, spoiler alert really quick, I don't watch the show, but I know what happened, and I understand a lot of people are upset about who the mother was and the fact that they're not in the picture anymore. I find pretty much the case to be in any long-running show where the ending is usually built up that people are always kind of disappointed no matter what, no matter what direction you go with. So like The Sopranos, Lost, whatever – Ending of a show that you really enjoy is always tough, and I'm sure it's probably going to be difficult to deal with that anyways. Next question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I would have to say the rooster. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, next question, programs, progressions you used through the years of lifting in which you got you the best results. So I'm going to give you a very high-level overview of this because I've been training for like 15 years, literally probably for the first 10 years of training. I just did typical bodybuilding bro splits of separate body part days. So like chest one day, back one day, arms one day, shoulders one day, and maybe legs, maybe. I did that for a long time. I saw a lot of progress initially, but then my gains kind of plateaued off or tapered off. And it wasn't until I started doing other program, really focused around strength and really relying on other people's input that I started to see results. So if you watch my video about changing routines and things like that, that's personal experience for me because I used to always kind of hack stuff to bits and really do what I was comfortable with. And while I enjoyed training, I wasn't seeing as much as I could out of it. So for the most part, Wendler was great for me. It really got me back into lifting heavy, dog crap, the cube, working with Dan. I think I might try to actually put together a training protocol program based off of some of those main things from those programs I just listed, but we'll see how things go. Next question on here. How do you keep yourself motivated and find the energy when you are so busy with work and work-related travel? So for me, I make training a priority and how I look at things is almost like a wagon wheel. So you have all these different things in life and maybe I'll go into a, a bigger in-depth video on this at some point, but you have all these different things in life that you have priorities for. So family, some people have religion, work, uh, YouTube in some cases, working out, training. So what I look at is you're in the middle, and each one of those things that you have is a spoke off of that. Now, the key to being successful at all of those is being able to devote the time necessary to each one where you don't necessarily over-prioritize anything too much because what that's going to start to do is take away from the rest of what you're interested in or what you really enjoy. 
So if we have a wagon wheel here and you have one really, 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 really long spoke because you really, really, really like training, let's say, that might leave a shorter spoke for work or your personal life or whatever else is interesting to you. And then if you picture that as a wheel trying to wrap around those spokes, it's probably not going to be circular. It's going to be oblong or whatever kind of shape you want to think of. And if you think about that trying to roll, it's not going to happen. Now, of course, this analogy would be a lot better with visual cues, so I hope you get what I'm putting down here. And again, maybe I'll do another video on this lately. But that could be a problem. So how do I keep myself motivated? I prioritize the things that are important to me and I make time for certain things. Now, if that means I have to get up earlier to train or that means that I have to stay late at work or whatever it might be, I just make sure I make time for the things that I enjoy and I think of reasons to do so. I don't know if that necessarily answered your question, but I'll go into another video on that at some other time. Next question. Can you do a video of your squats, how they improved over the years with old footage to now with comparing would make a great video. Now, unfortunately, I can't do this. Now, I didn't start recording myself squatting or working out until I think 2009 on my first initial channel, which was just Campbell Fitness. This one you're watching now is Campbell Fitness TV. Hopefully you guys know that. And I did that initial channel for like two or three years, and I had some workout footage on there, and that really helped me improve my own form because I could see how bad it was, plus a lot of you guys let me know. However, that channel is no more, and I don't have any copies of that information or those videos. So the oldest video I have of me working out is on this channel, which is only like a year and a half or so old. So I can't do that, unfortunately, but I can maybe try to make a video to help you with some general tips. Next question, how do you warm up your upper body? I don't really spend a ton of time doing this, really. I use a lot of band work, um, stuff that I saw from Bryce Lewis and Kelly Sturette, just really making sure that my shoulders are loose. And then what I do is I just spend time doing whatever lift I'm doing just to get kind of warmed up. So start low with the bar and add either 45s or 25s each set forward until I get close to my working weight. Next question is, what's your favorite color? I would say my favorite color is slate blue. It's actually kind of interesting because I don't have a lot of clothes out of that color, but it's always been a color that I've liked. Next question, do you shave your diddly hole? The answer is I get it threaded. Wrap your mind around that if you want. So that's all the questions I have for today. This video has been 12 and a half minutes of boring answers. I apologize, but I appreciate if you watch this. I might try to do another video before I get home, which is on Friday night. But if not, you'll see one on this weekend. Maybe that mock meet or maybe something else. We'll see. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.